try not to light my Beauty. mic on fire. <laughs> You're listening to Box Press, where we are passionate about cigars and how to care for them. Welcome to Box Press. My name is Rob, and I am your host today. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about how to winterize or get ready for season change for your humidor. So primarily today's focus is going to be talking about external factors. On a different podcast, we're going to talk about internal factors. But today, let's cover the external factors and get ready for the season. Just a little bit of background about me, myself. I used to work at a local smoke shop, Tobacco Grove. They also make Crux cigars, very good cigars. And that's where I kind of picked up my knowledge about cigars, cigar life, cigar uh, enjoyment. Um, I think Jeff puts it well, the last cigar of the day is the exclamation point to the end of the day. So it's kind of nice. I like to finish my day with a nice cigar in the car at home and enjoy that into dinner. Um, But there I learned a little bit about how to use Boveda and obtain it to um, my lifestyle. But I think once I got here, been working here under customer service and also been working under account management, I really, Mm. my wealth of knowledge just expounded just a ton Uh, because we have so much science and explanation on the back end of why we do what we do and how we do it and then how it affects cigars that a deeper understanding, you don't have to go too deep to understand it, but a deeper understanding really helps out figuring out how to apply it and troubleshoot it more than anything. So I hope you guys learn out of all of this how to troubleshoot your situation and see it from a different angle. And uh, the Bovada pack is not wrong. It's always right. Real quick, Rob, what are, what are some of the brands that you, um, what are some of the brands that you work with on a consistent basis now that you're here at Bovada? What are some of the big cigar brands that you work with? So some of the cigar brands that I work with is CLE or Asylum Cigars, um, as well as, uh, Altatus, which runs uh, Monte Cristo, um, things like that. Um, there's also Dapper Cigars, Crux Cigars. Um, man, I'm just, uh, there's so many that I That's can't even That's a pretty good remember. list. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and before I forget, we have Luke Chase here. He's our on-air producer helping me out. Happy to be here. Doing what we do here. Today, I'm going to be smoking the Aurora 20th series. It's called, it's called the First 20th. Um, or the first 20 years. And primarily this is all Honduran tobacco. Um, Christian Aurora's dad ended up growing all this tobacco for him and then gifted it to him for his first 20 years in the cigar industry. And uh, he ended up producing this, which is unbelievably smooth. Um, Just rich, smooth, it's great. I would light one of these every single day. And... Don't let the color fool you. It's, it's mm-hmm. not intense. It's just, it's good. So the tip today is going to be how to get your humidor ready for any sort of climate change or extreme change that happens in your area. So that might be in wintertime, it gets drier or wetter if you're in a tropical area. Or if you're in a very dry area like Denver, Colorado, it might be dry all the time. But at any rate, we're going to be talking about those extreme temperature changes, and you might have to be changing your RH level inside your humidor. Um, The problem that this is going to solve is going to solve that RH drop or an RH increase if you're going into a more wet season. Uh, We're going to always try to keep our humidor stable, but that external environment is going to put a heavy vacuum on that wood humidor, and it's going to want to change it. So we're going to try to prevent that change from happening. Rob, talk external change versus internal change. Well, the external change is what's going on outside the humidor. Um, That's going to be that temperature. It's going to also be the relative humidity in the environment you keep it in. And those are the primary causes of it. I mean, sunlight is there too, but in a wood humidor, that's really not an issue. Um, More an issue in like a clear container. Um, The difference between external and internal, internal has everything to do with just what's going on on the inside. So if the cigars are new, if you have, um, you know, introduced a different uh, humidifying device with the Bovada, that's going to change the internal environment. We're going to steer a little bit clear of that today and just focus on external only. So the different types of external changes that you might encounter are going to be seasonal, 
It also might be um, a change in your geographical location. You might be changing from one area of the country to the next. Like if you're traveling? Yeah, if you're traveling, or it might be even the location of your humidor in your house. Like if you Mm -hmm. had furniture uh, in one spot of the house and it was down in the basement and then you moved your humidor up to your main room or all the way up to your bedroom, um, that, that might change what's happening to that humidor and you might experience a drop or an increase in RH. Perfect. Um, now, the the uh, the type of humidor that you have is going to play a big part in this process. Talk about um, that a little right. bit, and then talk about for today what type of humidor are we just going to be kind of referring to. Got it. So the humidor does play a huge role in this whole topic. So let's just talk, for instance, today for today reasons only we're going to talk about a wood humidor it's going to be your standard run-of-the-mill kind of three to four hundred dollar i'm not going to name any brands out there but just no glass lids nothing that has a very inexpensive feel Um, cigar or humidor manufacturers can cheap out on the humidor by using the bottom they don't use a hardwood so we're going to talk about ones that are using hardwoods all throughout and uh, they're not glass top, so that's not another area where humidity can leak. And then uh, we'll go from there. Rob, let's say we live in Minnesota right now. It's October. We're about to jump into the heart of fall. And of course, the winter is not far behind that. Um, everyone knows that the winter in Minnesota is very extreme. Yes. Yes. Take me through step by step. What are you about to do right now to get your humidor ready for the fall here in Minnesota? I'm going to do at least one of the two things that I would recommend. It just depends upon what happens and when you catch it. So if you're proactive, uh, simply I, I run 69s. I run 69s in my humidor. You can see this is a 100 count humidor. I run to 320 grams, which is double what you need. The minimum in for a 320 that it can handle is up to 150 count, but you can't overhumidify with Bovida. So, and I travel a lot, so why not just put two in there if it can fit? So I do. And what ends up happening though during the season change is I see a drop in RH level because we're sitting right now still with today we got some rain coming in outside we're sitting at about 54 percent relative humidity inside Mm. the office which is fine it's great that's perfect and in fact in the summertime it gets even higher can get up to 80 percent that's why i run the 69s in the summertime here in minnesota even with a wood humidor even with a wood humidor because it tends to the wood humidor then tends to take on the outside moisture level because where are we always trying to get our humidor to be at it depends upon what you have inside of it as far as the tobacco, and that's a whole different podcast Got that it. I'll talk about. But for my purposes today, I'm going to be talking about the average is 69 to 70%. So that's what we're just going to go with. If you got Cubans and stuff like that, or if you like stuff drier, you can apply this stuff to your RH level. But that's why I'm getting ready for this drop. Right now we're at 54% inside the office, but eventually it's going to get down to 10 and hover right around 15 to 20 on a constant. So now I'm at 67, 68, you know, in my inside my humidor, possibly 69. Wood humidors always leak a little bit of moisture, so they usually never reach 69%. Um, but that's just the nature of a wood humidor, breeze moisture, it's supposed to. Um, so when I'm sitting up at that high 60 range and all of a sudden the external environment slams down to 10 to 15%, it's like this massive vacuum that my humidor is sitting in and the outside is screaming for moisture and it's going to take it immediately from my humidor. And once that happens, I got to get ready for it. So I got to bump up the humidity level up to 72% to offset that negative pressure that's happening and that vacuum that's happening on my humidor. So take me step by step, first off, having your hygrometer calibrated, and then from there on out, what do I need to know to make my humidor perfect for for winter? Got it. So the step by step to make this season change happen is we're gonna use a calibrated hygrometer for one. 
if you're measuring without a calibrated hygrometer, you're not doing anybody any service. You might as well stop, go back to home base, rehit. So make sure you're using a calibrated hygrometer. Use the Bovada calibration kit. For all you guys who are doing the salt water mixture and inside a little cup or uh, water cap, it doesn't work. It can be off. I've done it before. I've tested it in our lab. It just doesn't work. It's not accurate. You could get accurate, but it's not as accurate as the Bovida calibration kit. And what's funny is that a Bovida pack itself is a salt test. It is. It it's is. just a more, it's just a very, it's basically a salt test that was developed by chemists to be so precise. Well, the, the natural salt is so precise. It's 0.03% yeah. precise, the natural salt that's used. The reason why the Bovida packs aren't as precise is because we use a mixture of salts inside the pack in order so, to reach different rh levels than just exactly. the 75 percent, which is what normal table salt will provide which is what right. a normal salt test does but anyways proceed yes so and that's why we guarantee them up to one percent off that rh value of the other ones but make sure you have a calibrated hygrometer moving on from there i run 69 uh 69 percent in the summertime because the external environment is sitting right around 50 to 80 percent humidity so sometimes the humidor sucks up that humidity that's on the outside and it's providing um, a level of humidity that i want to be able to absorb and keep it closer to 70 to 69 percent inside my humidor and then i immediately for winter change i throw in the bova to 72s because the external environment um wow sorry guys the external environment is actually going to drop and slam down to 10 to 15 percent during the winter time and that's a huge vacuum that's happening on that humidor so if i throw the bova to 72s in there this just gives me a little extra cushion because rarely do i ever hit um, what's on my bova pack inside my wood humidor wood humidors naturally breathe that moisture like they should and when I run 69s, I'm usually right around 67, 68. And when I run 72s, I'm right around 69, 70. So you're talking a lot about using the Bovida product to make sure that, that your humidor, you know, is spot on. What if someone's not using a Bovida product? How are they going to get their humidor ready to go for the winter if they're not using a Bovida product? Maybe they're using, you know, gels or beads or something else like that. I have no idea because it's straight 100% humidity, whether you're using the heartfelt beads or anything else. As soon as you add that water or spray the water on there, it's 100% humidity. And it can't, man-made products just have a hard time holding moisture to themselves. So they try and they hold maybe, you know, 10, 20, 30%. And then they give the rest off and then what ends up happening is you get this like spike system and it's just, it's a mess. I've ruined four full humidors trying that system out. So it's me, I'm going to use Bovida. Obviously we're biased because we work at Bovida, but... <laughs> I would do it if I didn't even work here. I mean, there's absolutely no way I'm going to protect thousands of dollars worth of cigars to 100% humidity. Just ask. It doesn't make sense. Just ask, you know, CLE cigars, if you're wondering. Right? Exactly. Right, Rob? Exactly. Rob, talk about being proactive and reactive. Actually, I think you kind of already talked about that. Well, yeah, the proactive part is like, I know I got a hygrometer in my desk. I know when it's going to spike down to 10% and I can get my humidor ready. But the reactive part is important because if you don't catch it, like I'm leaving in the middle of this month to go to Houston. If I don't catch my humidor and I come back, now I'm not going to be gone very long, but if you forgot, you could come back and the humidor could be at or near 60%. And once it gets that low, you almost have to want to re-season the wood inside mm. there because the wood's going to start giving up its own moisture to help humidify the cigars. What is that going to start to do to the cigars if it gets that low? the cigars are going to be giving up at the same time. So the wood and the cigars are giving up all this moisture. In turn, once you put the Bova to 72s in there, you're going to have a further drop, like instead of two or three points in my system, it's going to be five to eight possibly. And I'm going to be like, well, the Bova to packs aren't working, but they are They're They have to now humidify two things, mm. the cigars and the wood. So if I drop too low, I'll just take everything out, put it in a, bovida, a large Bovida humidor bag. I'll re-season, 
I'll get that wood back up to where I want it for 14 days and then I'll throw everything back in and I won't lose much life out of the Bovida pack 72% as I would if I didn't. I just go through more 72s and it might take longer to get my smokes back up to where I want them. That's the whole point of the whole process is I go into this humidor daily. I don't want it to fall far from 70%. So the whole point of it, you know, people say is like, well, why do I have to season? Well, you don't have to, then you just have to wait. If you want to wait, you can, but I don't want to wait. I'm impatient. Mm -hmm. I want my cigars where they're at all the time, 24 seven, ready every day. And it's not great if your cigars are spending a lot of time outside of. No, yeah, it's, it's good health for the cigar to stay right at 70% or around 70% and just keep it going. What if your humidor, what if, you are being reactive to your humidor actually spiking in humidity instead of dropping. Then what are the consequences and the steps to proceed? It, it gets a little bit tougher. Um, just because if you're spiking in humidity, then you have to provide a big enough vacuum or a big enough draw to s suck that moisture out. It's something that some people call dry boxing, where you're gonna take everything out Put those cigars inside a Boveda humidor bag, large one if you have a, a lot, and keep them in with 69s. And then you got to figure out a way to dry that box out, mm. whether that be putting a fan over it or whatever. For a lot of people, like in Denver, where it's super dry, um, and those people who then live on the opposite spectrum of a tropical climate where they just can't keep humidity down, I recommend the Boveda acrylic humidor or the Boveda humidor bag because we want something that's not porous. All right, Rob, we have talked about a lot of dense information here. Um, give everyone just a quick little recap of, you know, bing, 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 what they need to know about preparing their humidor for season change. Gotcha. Make sure you're working with a calibrated high grommeter. Use the Boveda calibration kit. Make sure that that's your accurate tool for measuring. Then from there, make sure if you need to go up or down, that you're changing that Boveda RH level. So for me in the wintertime, I'm going from 69 summer to 72 winter. And that's just because I know my humidor. So get to know your humidor, know what it likes to do, know how many points it's off. And then from there, if you're going into a very extreme climate, you might need to escape the wood humidor and move into a, what we call a closed system or an airtight system. So the Boveda humidor bag, the Boveda acrylic humidor, anything that does not allow moisture in or out so that you can keep those cigars fresh. Now, a lot of people talk about cedar and is it needed and blah, blah, blah. It is not needed to age cigars, um, in my opinion. I have 90% of my inventory in Boveda humidor bags, and I love it. Mm. Keeps them constant at 69%. What is good about a wood humidor then? The good part about a wood humidor is the fact that it does breathe that moisture and it also gives off some of the fermented gases that are happening inside because those cigars are still fermenting. So mm -hmm. it's good for long-term aging. Plus that cedar smell also leaches sometimes into the cigar and can give it a good smell and aroma and taste and flavor. Perfect. Okay, we are going to jump right into a little segment of this show that we like to call hashtag Ask Bovida. Mm. Um, we take questions from social media. Um, that people off ask very often or frequently. Rob, I'm sure you've heard all of these before. I just got two questions for you. This first question is a question that I get a lot on social media. I've gotten it two to three times this week. This person asked, well, they stated, my Boveda packs aren't working. My RH is too low. What's wrong? I got to go back to the, have you calibrated with a Boveda calibration kit? Because if, if we have an inaccurate hygrometer, we have no idea what we're, de what we're dealing with. If you have, and you know that it's still fine, then there's the two factors that we go to right away. Are there external factors or internal factors? External factor would be the moisture is being evaporated or lost out of the humidor. It's being sucked out, or it's going to something inside of it. Like, did you put new cigars in? So if you put new cigars in, you have, you can't rush the hands of time. You have to give it time. And in fact, I always tell people I bought some cigars that came in at 62% after two weeks in a Boveda acrylic humidor, not even a wood humidor. It still wasn't above 64%. 
I had to wait four and a half weeks to get it up to 69. So the rule of thumb is it takes four times longer to rehumidify a cigar than it does to dehumidify it. So if your RH is dropping, something's causing it to mm. take up that moisture. And it's not necessarily a bad thing unless it gets below 60%. But at least the Bovida packs are feeding it. Or the third thing that sometimes happens is the person doesn't have enough Bovida packs inside. So if you're using the 60 gram size, you gotta use one per 25 count. Not the amount of cigars that are inside the humidor, but the amount that it can totally hold, the total capacity. That makes, yeah, that makes total sense. Okay, my next question is actually kind of a combination of three to four questions, but they all kind of have to do with the same topic. My cigars are crispy and dry when I squeeze them. What's wrong? Or my cigars are burning too hot. What's wrong? My cigars don't burn well. I have to keep lighting them. What's wrong? Or my cigars smell damp or musty. What's wrong? Not enough humidity or too much. So, and it, it gets down to a personal preference, right? So when I smoked that cigar that came in at 62%, it was harsh. It hit the back of my throat. I didn't like it. It burned. It was kind of crackly. It burned very hot. And as soon as I brought it up to 69, it was smooth. It had good flavor. I was tasting some of the notes that the review said. I was like, this is great. This is a phenomenal cigar. So I would say you always have to play with that cigar, um, and if you have to get individualized, buy some Bovida small or medium humidor bags and really start to experiment with it. Maybe this cigar is a Dominican Puro and it does better at 65%. Mm. Maybe this cigar is a little bit, you know, a little dry and uh, I need to bring it up to 69 or 72 even. I mean, the, the flavor profile is going to change drastically. We've measured it. When these cigars are in between 65 and 70 the flavor profile can change a ton and you can get a bunch of different flavors out of it or you can knock all the flavor out of it and it just tastes bland. It sounds like the quality of your cigar really comes down to what is the moisture content of that cigar and it sounds like the biggest way to keep that stabilized is to properly maintain your humidor. And the, and the relative humidity or the RH level inside of that humidor. Absolutely, 100%. And that's why we have manufacturers that package with Bovoda because that small window, that five to 10 day window that they ship in can ruin the cigar. You know, like I said, it, they came in at 62% when they were shipped without Bovoda. It's a huge problem. Now I gotta wait four weeks, if not more, till I can enjoy that cigar the way that manufacturer intended. And if you don't wait four weeks, then you have a cigar that was at 62%. And what's bland. the result? It was bland. It was harsh. It didn't have any of the flavors that the reviews talked about. Not and worth I was, it. I was extremely disappointed in my purchase. and uh, But it wasn't until I reintroduced, you know, obviously got it back up to 69% with the Bovida packs and realized it's just all about the relative humidity. That's everything. You know, it's 100% everything to this whole industry. And it needs it so that it's on point to taste and smell and burn the way it should. Did you realize that when you were working um, over at the cigar shop before you started working at Bovida? I realized it, but it was subconscious because the humidor was a walk-in. It was always regulated. Mm -hmm. It was great. Every time I picked a cigar up and I lit it while I was at work, I was like, this is phenomenal. But then I'd go home and I'd forget about my Bovida pack or I'd forget about, you know, back then I was using the gel and the sponge mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And it would just, poof, poof. and you know, at the end of the day, I was like, oh, man, I can't really do this very well. And it put me in a position where I was like, maybe I shouldn't be storing all these cigars. I should just go to smoke shop and buy them. They taste much better there. But if you do spend some time with your humidor, it's weird. You kind of got to get intimate a little bit. You got to figure out what it needs and you have to be aware of when it wants to change those needs. And, that, and that's mainly the main reason of this whole podcast is I want you to understand that just because you're the guy who uses 72 in your wood humidor may not mean that you use that 12 months out of the year. Mm. Maybe you change it up because you need to because of the external environment. Thanks for sharing all your knowledge, Rob. No I really appreciate it. We got a ton more to go. 
Thanks for tuning in to Box Press. This episode was very dense. If you are listening to this episode on iTunes or another platform and want to find definitions and supplementary videos on the terminology or topics we discussed today, this episode is available in a video format on YouTube. If you want to find more episodes like this, you can also find those on our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, and Instagram at Bovida Inc. If you are already watching this episode and wish to listen to more episodes like this in your car and on the go, BoxPress is available as a podcast on iTunes.